What's cracking like it's your boy bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so and we're back again once again taking a look at the best available prospects going into day three you will have day two draft grades probably out right after this video so be on the look for that and join us tonight for day three of the NFL draft we're doing a watch party we're doing it bigger we're doing it longer we're gonna be going all night, baby. All night long. All night. Yeah, that's right. I got the chops to sing. Not, not really. But we're going to take a look at the best available prospects. There were some notable guys that had some pretty big falls. So, yeah, we'll get into that. Go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. And without further ado, let's get into the nitty gritty. We're going to be view uh, viewing this on Draft Network. And so really, these are my top five guys left on the board. And we'll go through some a lot more. So hang with me. But I got Jabril Cox here. Yes, he's my top guy on the board. He was 47th overall on my board. I think a big reason to his fall is just probably how he plays the run game. He wasn't that good in the run game. So uh, maybe teams are just viewing him as a uh, just a coverage linebacker. So here he is, left on the board, uh, Jamar Johnson. We could throw um, Tay Gowan into this discussion too because I think th their fall is because of a, just limited sample size. We only saw Tay Gowan in 2019, and he missed 2020 because, um, well, he was going to play the 2020 season, and then he got the Rona uh, and then decided, hey, man, my family, they're, they're important to me. I'm just going to start training for the NFL draft, but he, he's quality, dude. He's got great closing speed, great length. Jamar Johnson, another guy. He only had 300 snaps last year, I believe, and then 400-some um, this year. So a very small sample size, but I love the movement skills. The guy is a ball hawk. It's just the pro day didn't match up with the type of movement he had on film. It's kind of wonky. Rashad Weaver at four here. At edge, uh, I like him a lot better than Patrick Jones. I'll just say that. Uh, but he, he's kind of a power rusher, more of an edge setter as well. Uh, he's got to translate that, or like he's got a skill set that will translate to success to the NFL. It's just not one that's highly sought out. So guaranteed, he goes maybe fourth, fifth round. Or Darius Washington, very talented, probably one of the best uh, football IQs in this draft. But just because of his size, he's probably going to be teams view him as slot only, unfortunately. Let's go over the next five here on the list. I got Trey Brown, another guy, unfortunately, probably viewed at because of his size. He's like 5'9", as a slot only. Uh, but this man, he has a lot of experience in press coverage being out there in the Big 12. And he's done well over the course of his career, like... This guy is, it, he, you can't challenge him, man. He makes plays on the ball. So I think he can succeed on the outside, but probably teams view him as a slot only. Tylen Wallace still on the board here. What I'm thinking is just because the limited route tree Oklahoma State asked from him, which I thought he did get better as a route runner. He did expand that route tree, but limited length, the catch race isn't huge, especially for Wallace who... Like downfield, he's kind of a contested catch guy. He goes up and he gets the football. He plays physical. It's just, ah, it's, again, small catch radius. Um, also, he's a guy that I that relies a lot on momentum and contact. It, 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 he doesn't handle it too well during his routes. Marvin Wilson, we kind of expected the fall from Marvin Wilson. Doesn't mean he's not a great prospect. I think he's still one of the better nose guys in this class um yeah i don't think he's a three down player but i think he has plus pass rush uh for well for a man playing his size jalen darden i i kind of called this like i don't think i didn't think any team was gonna take a shot on a small like an undersized vertical slot receiver out of North Texas. That's just the case, which is a shame. The Heat can be special. Trey Smith, I'm sure medicals probably played a big, big role in his um, his descent down the board. But um, yeah, the blood callouts in the lungs, it cost him a lot of time there in Tennessee. But I think whoever gets him is getting a very good, very, very good guard. Going down the list some more. We got Cameron Sample, which really puzzled me. 
because Chauncey Golson came off the board, and I would consider him a value brand. Well, Cameron Sample. Cameron Sample, I think, is a good edge setter with very good interior pass rush. So it, especially after a strong senior bowl, it kind of surprises me he's down here. Tamar and Terry, I fully expected him to fall. Uh, it's really a guy that I'm just really high on. Um, there's some other people out there that's higher on too, but 2020 was just such a disaster of a year for him there at Florida State for a lot of Florida State prospects, uh, not named Asante Samuel Jr. So really unfortunate, but I think any some team's going to get a very good um, vertical receiver, big vertical receiver with really good after the catch ability. Like he, like him in the screen game, pretty pretty nice. Amon Ross St. Brown also making it to day three. And I'm just going to pile this to like, he's a very crafty route runner. He's, he's good. He's very good at a lot of different things, but he's really a master of none. Unfortunately, like there's not one thing he could really hang his hat on. And I think that's why he fell Thomas Graham jr. I think he could be a day one starter uh, as a slot corner, but there's not much wow to his game. I think he's just going to be a solid, solid player. Michael Carter. I was surprised. Um, didn't come off the board we saw only what trey sermon come off in the third round so didn't see really any of the running backs so i think we're gonna see uh fourth round maybe a run on some of these guys but michael carter very very skilled very physical despite being only like what five eight five seven very good um at breaking tackles making guys miss in general very good in the passing game as well on to the next group here I got Cade Johnson. Doesn't surprise me. He's coming out of South Dakota State. He's very quick, but I won't really say fast. Um, he really just, he's a good route runner. He just feels like a solid slot guy, but that's kind of a dime a dozen in this class. James Hudson. He He's not going to be a guy you start immediately. He's not going to be a guy you start day one. He's a developmental prospect, but he has got some high upside. He's really new to the offensive tackle position. He doesn't have many snaps outside of this past season but he had actually one of the highest win rates at the senior bowl despite well not really having good technique but i think if you grab him you sit him you develop him you could have a real star there at uh tackle khalil herbert i'm not gonna lie to you i'm surprised that trey sermon came off the board before khalil herbert khalil herbert low center of gravity Game breaking, ta like just tackle missing ability. I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, his game translates well, and he's in terms of straight line speed, very fast. So I was kind of surprised that um, I'm not too surprised he, he fell, but I expect him to be a name you hear early on day uh, day three. Davion Nixon. This one doesn't surprise me at all, man. He kind of came out of nowhere this season in a full time role. But we all know he is a developmental guy. He's got a bit of a learning curve. Like, he's got a lot of grit. Like, he deals with a learning disability. But this guy does not stop. Does not stop. Pure grit. He's working on uh, working on it. I think he could be good maybe down the line. Maybe a year three, year four guy. But he, do he does need some development. Brevin Jordan. Apparently, apparently, teams just didn't. Just apparently there's character concerns, so I don't know if that stemmed from interviews, but uh, also they just don't they, they expected him to be more athletic on his pro day, which is fair. I thought he would be more of a physical specimen, um, but it's not like he's a very good route runner. He's more of an after the catch guy. So the fall this could be a a decent fall for Brevin Jordan. Let's continue down the list, man. All right on to tyler shelvin uh i mean there's no real pass rush upside with shelvin but he's probably the thickest nose tackle in this class guaranteed run stuffer those guys they will go um on day three so he will find a home s slowly but surely patrick johnson funny enough during my stream i when the vikings took patrick jones i heard patrick and i thought they took johnson and i went wild uh that ha not happened not to be the case um, maybe it's cause he comes from a small school. Maybe that happened to Cameron sample too, but I really like Johnson. He doesn't have great length, but the dude is a workout warrior, man. He, he has some traits. Tommy Togiai. 
I don't feel like he's a three down player, but he's stupid strong. I think he's gonna be a very good run stuffer. Um, yeah, he never played over 300 snaps for Ohio State in a season, so a bit questionable there. Austin Watkins, I'm telling y'all right now, I bet you Austin Watkins goes undrafted. I love Austin Watkins, but there's nothing wow about his game. He's a big guy that that can run a really good route. That can run really good routes. Um, I think that will succeed in the NFL. I just don't think it's going to be drafted highly. Demetric Felton, I'm not going to be surprised if he falls further. He had a really bad pro day. So he could be a guy that we can see fall pretty far down. And then let's go over our last uh, five. I'm going to give you 30 guys. How about that? And we're going to start with Jordan Smith. Um, he, I expected him to be more of a... Um, okay. There we go. <laughs> no, no, no. I need to go one more. Ah, all right, that's good enough. Whatever. Uh, here, I'll give you a 30 plus one. Uh, Jordan Smith, I expected him to be a fourth round guy just because he's stupid raw. There is news that he will fall further. It could even go undrafted, but um, dude's powerful, super athletic, but you are working with an extremely raw prospect. He dominated at UAB, but I mean, you, you all you can do is play the guys in front of you, and he happened to do that very well, but there are mental lapses uh, on tape there, especially in the run game. Ramondre Stevenson's kind of a my guy. I could see him probably going sixth round. Um, he's a big, big back that doesn't really ne necessarily play like a big back. He's very patient um, and very just good with his feet. Christian Uphoff, he is a small school safety, but he's got good movement skills. Uh, he should be a guy that really goes early on day, uh, day three. Jamie Newman, straight up, man. Y'all know I like Jamie Newman. Um, he will probably be the next quarterback taken, whether it's in the fourth or fifth round. It's just a question where I, I like Jamie Newman a lot. We know he's a guy that you got to develop. Um, he really struggles in the middle of the field, man. He just doesn't see safeties over the top, doesn't see linebackers underneath, and it's you got to work on his decision making. He really worked in a very simple offense at Wake Forest. Really wish he played at Georgia uh, last season, but decided to opt out. Seth Williams. Potential contested catch guy, like he's got some real bunny hops, if you know what I'm saying. And the thing is, I just don't think he's a good separator, but he could be a good contested catch guy. To be fair, uh, Bo Nix never put him in any good positions to do so. Um, here, let's actually let you screw it. We'll go over. I'll give you a thirty plus three. Uh, then I have Deontay Smith. I see him as a guard. Um, another developmental guy, exceptionally raw. Played majority of right tackle, I believe. No, it was left tackle. Um, at Eastern Carolina came in, looked real good at the Senior Bowl, but he is a bit undersized. Derek Force is a guy I love. I could see him probably fall into the fifth, sixth round. I think he'd be a good split high guy. I think there's a bit of versatility in his coverage game. He plays the run well. I think he's one of the best kept secrets in this draft. And then Cornell Powell, just a good big receiver. He's been on the older side and didn't really blossom until, well, the second half of his senior year. Did I tell you it was his... He was a five-year or a fifth-year senior. Yeah, so, yeah, I could see why uh, why that might hurt his stock. But uh, he's more of a fourth-rounder anyway. So these are some of my – like, a lot of these guys I have fourth-round grades on. Um, let's see. Where where do my third – like, I think Brevin Jordan or – no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I think Brevin Jordan and up. So I have 20 guys with third-round grades or higher um still available so there's a lot of good value to be had but uh join me tonight or this afternoon for day three it's gonna be a good time i'll probably have alex from the uh hail mary podcast join in with me so we can discuss some of the picks and feel free to come chat with us it's always a great time but uh that's it for the video until next time you be easy my friends later